Hey, we have here today a pretty difficult looking integral. This one's from UNSW 2021, final round, problem three. We have the integral from minus pi over two to pi over two, x sine x cos x over e to the x plus one dx. Okay, I gotta admit, so I was just kind of staring at this one for a while because I wasn't sure what to do. Because the problem we have is that, you know, sine and cosine work fine together, but then we have an x making it more complicated. But then e to the x, we really have a hard time is we can't really, any kind of u substitution seems like it's kind of going nowhere. Might be able to try integration by parts. I didn't try it, but it looks like it would be kind of messy, but I don't know, that might work. The thing that stuck out for me though was these bounds, that it's symmetrical or pi over two. It makes me think that we could do like almost like King's principle um, using the symmetry, some type of substitution. What I came upon was I want to do the substitution u equals minus x. Okay, from there, that also means obviously that x is minus u. And then we can get our dx value, taking the derivative, we have dx is minus du. Okay, let's do the substitution and see what we have. So first we'll update our bounds. Plugging pi over two in here, it's just gonna change the sign. So we'll have minus pi over two plus pi over two. Our x is gonna be minus u. Um, sine x, okay, so we're just gonna have we're just changing the sign and everything, so I might as well just do it, right? Okay, so we'll just plug in our minus u, same thing here, e to the minus x, plus one, minus du. Then before I do anything, what I can do is I can take this sign, bring it in front, and change our, swap our bounds, so this will become plus and this will become minus, just because we're switching, we're flipping those. Then we can do some things with the um, with even and odd functions here. So cosine of minus u, because it's an even function, we can just turn that to a plus and ignore that. This minus sign for the on sine, sine's an odd function, so we could take a minus sign out and use it to make this a plus here. Okay, and one more thing I want to do before we continue. I'm trying to get this to look as much like our first integral as possible, and we have this minus sign. So we, we're doing pretty well with this is the, the numerator is basically the same thing, right? Just in u, the denominator is a little different, but we can fix that by multiplying through numerator and denominator by e to the u. Okay, then this term will become one, and then this term will become e to the u. So by doing that, now we have the same denominator here, except in u, and we just have this extra e to the u term. Now from here, in order to use the symmetry, what I wanna do is I wanna combine these two somehow. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna change this variable back to x. Because it's a definite integral, I can change the variable to whatever I want. So let's change, let me rewrite this in x and clean it up. Okay, so this is shaping up. We have it where it looks very similar. We just have this e to the x. Now what I wanna do is we'll take these two integrals. Our first integral, we're just gonna call this i, just so we can keep track of it. But then this is also i, because we didn't do anything to change it. We just manipulated it. Also notice because we have the same bounds, we're, we're all in x, that's gonna allow me to bring this into one integral. And we also have the same denominator, so we're just gonna be able to combine like terms. So let's see how that's all gonna look. Okay, so all I've done here is I take, I've taken this integral and just brought it down here and added it, and now we have our two copies of the integral. Now we notice we have the same denominator, so let's just add these together. But when I do that, we have this term in common here. Okay, so we'll basically factor that out. So when I rewrite this, I'm gonna write my x sine x, cos x, okay, times ex, and then we have a one right here, so we can write this as e to the x plus one. But then what that's gonna allow us to do is just do a cancellation right here, because we have the same term in the numerator and denominator. And now we have our integral simplified, where we don't have that problem where we're trying to deal with trig functions and e to the x in the same integral. One change before I integrate, I'm gonna actually multiply by a two here and multiply by a half. What that's gonna allow me to do is use the double angle identity that this is going to be the same. 2 sine x cos x is the same thing as sine of 2x. Then to integrate, we'll use integration by parts or the DI method. So tabular integration, I'm going to make two columns here, a d to differentiate and i to integrate. I'm going to differentiate my half x because it's going to reduce nicely. And then we'll integrate sine of 2x. So differentiating our half x, we're going to have 1 half. And then differentiating again, we're going to have a 0. Integrating sine 2x, we're gonna have minus 1 half cosine 2x. And then integrating one more time, we're gonna bring our two out again, so we're gonna have minus 1 fourth 
sine 2x. Okay, and our solution is just going to be on these diagonals, so let's write that out. We're going to have minus 1 fourth x cosine 2x, and then here we're going to have a plus 1 over 8 sine 2x, and we're evaluating this thing from pi over 2 to minus pi over 2. Okay, and we'll just evaluate this, so we're going to have, let's do this carefully, minus 1 fourth times, plug in our pi over 2 here, cosine of 2 times pi over 2 is going to be pi plus 1 eighth sine 2 times pi over 2 sine of pi. Okay, so we'll have this. And then we're going to have minus, plugging in our minus pi over 2, so we're going to have um, minus 1 fourth minus pi over 2. We'll clean it up in a second. Then we'll have cosine minus pi. And we'll have plus 1 eighth and then sine at minus pi. Okay, sine at pi is zero, so that's going away. Sine at minus pi is zero, so that's going away. Then here we have, let's see, so cosine at pi, um, cosine of pi, this is actually just negative one right here, and this is also just negative one. So then simplifying, we're gonna have here, we're gonna have pi over eight for this piece right here, and then for this one, so we're gonna have minus, and then here we're gonna have, um, a minus pi over 8. Okay, with minus minus plus, so we have pi over 4. Then that's not quite our solution because we have this is two copies of the integral. So we'll just divide this by 2 and divide this by 2. And so our final solution is going to be just pi over 8. So that's it. Thought it was a really good problem today. That's UNSW 2021. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day.